The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. Akil! Bakari! Where are you? In the French room. Bro, I can't, I can't get there, bro. I think I'm blind. You're not blind. It's just darker than usual. Bro, it's like I could feel this type of darkness, bro. Yo, go try light a candle. Where are the candles? I, what is Pharaoh doing? Man, he need to let these Israelites go. Like, first we had the blood. Then what was it? It was the frogs, the gnats, the flies. Man, I'm still trying to get over those boils, man. Bro, I lost my livestock. Yes. I lost all of my livestock. And then those hail... Man, you ever see fire and ice in the sky at the same time? That shouldn't be possible. You would think that Pharaoh would give in after that. Well, but you know what the craziest thing is? What? What could be worse than all of this? I honestly don't even want to know. Pharaoh closed his eyes and his heart to all the wonders that God had shown him through Moses. He refused to let the people of Israel go and worship their God in the desert. And because of the stubbornness and pride of the king of Egypt, God was about to unleash all manner of destruction upon the land and wage war against their false gods. In this week's episode, we explore the plagues of Egypt. Egypt. We are back with another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air, continuing with the book of names, uh, Moses, (laughs) Exodus. And so we're picking up in Exodus 7. As a recap, last week we talked about Moses going to Egypt and how Pharaoh's heart was hardened Mm -hmm. and how he said, the people were lazy. I'm going to make you guys work harder, going to make you guys produce the same quota of bricks as you did before, but this time I'm not even going to give you straw. Hmm. And we see how Pharaoh's like, yeah, I'm not not letting these people go. So... One thing I was thinking about with Pharaoh, like we could even see the Pharaoh before him, maybe. Um, he was, well, one of the Pharaohs before him, or maybe the direct Pharaoh before him, who cares? But he was so worried that they would rise up against him. That's the reason why he initially made them slaves. And, you know, this Pharaoh, he seems to want to occupy them. So he wanted to he wanted to make sure that he's so occupied to the point where even if you guys were because you know Moses and Aaron back in town, even if you guys were planning a revolt, you're not going to have time. Because seriously, why wouldn't you allow them to worship? You could be that type of guy, but you make their life you don't you probably thought their life was hard already, but you said I'm making sure y'all have literally no time left to do anything. No. Y'all don't have time to worship. Y'all don't have time to plan a revolt. None of that. You understand? So like this guy, that was a tactic in itself just to keep them, just to keep them so busy to the point where they can't make no advance. Like they can't advance themselves to be free or to even revolt against them if, if they wanted to. So now picking up from verse 14, the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. As he goes out to the river, confront him by the bank of the Nile and take your hand and take your hand, the staff that was changed to the snake. And then say to him, the Lord, your God of the Hebrews has sent me to you. Let my people go. Mm -hmm. So they may worship me in the wilderness. People always is missed out part. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of funny how much time is actually said. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let, my people, let my people go to do this. Right. Everyone's saying, nah, let, let my, my people, people go. go. Right. 
Man, I remember we even sang a song in church with this before. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what popularized it, that exact yeah. song. <laughs> go down Moses' way down to Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Mm -hmm. But until now, you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. With the stop that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink this water. Mm. Disgusting. I like how God just telling them everything ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this is what I'm going to do. Here's just going to be the result. Just let them go and this can all be avoided. Ain't leaving nothing up to the imagination. No. Because like God could have said... <laughs> God could say, let my people go so they may worship. And if you, that does not happen, there would be serious ramifications. Serious ramifications <laughs> for your actions. Exactly. <laughs> and he could have kept it vague. And that's not uncommon. You know, but God is telling Moses everything was going to happen. Like, bro, tell him. First of all, he started off by saying, if this is my firstborn son, and if you don't let them worship me, your firstborn son is going to die. And God ain't saying this idly. God knows how Pharaoh feels about his firstborn son. You understand? So this should have been enough for you to just say, all right, all right, cool, I cave in. But even now, Moses, um, when he's talking to Moses, after, after Pharaoh had already, he had already showed himself to be of a heart and heart and he turned up the fire on them. Mm -hmm. he, God given Moses the blueprint, bro. Go to him and say, again, let them go to the wilderness so that they can worship me. It's, it's been a long time. It's been a while. They've cried to me for years and they seem like I have forsaken them. They've not heard it from they've not heard from me. They can't do this. Let me ask you this, Earl. If they can't even worship, if they so occupied that they literally don't have nothing else to do, would they be able to keep the Sabbath? You understand? <laughs> would they be able to hold all the principles that God had passed down from Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, mm -hmm. etc.? They would not have been nope. and you living in a foreign land. You understand what I'm saying? So like, here it is. God is saying, it's important for me to reconnect my people. There's a lot of healing that needs to be done. We need to worship. We need to construct things. And Pharaoh is obstructing that, you know? And then he further goes on to say, and if this doesn't happen, I am going to turn this into this. And then they're not going to be able to drink. The water is going to be stink. Like, I'm, I am, this is, this is. Imagery right now, like I'm, I'm, I'm painting everything out for you. Cause like, even with me, even when I thought about the plagues, I never thought about, oh, if all of this stuff is dead in the land, someone's going to have to clean this up. Like all, you don't understand? Like, and it's one thing too, I just want people to recognize and come to terms with too. All of these plagues were literal plagues. There's nothing symbolic about this. It wasn't God saying, I'm going to symbolically turn the water red mm -hmm. and it's going to be water. Like God's like, no. The water is going to be blood. blood. Yeah, It wasn't no red water that you could still drink. No, the water is going to literally turn into blood. Hmm. And we see the, like, the Bible even goes deeper than just saying the water will turn into blood. We see in verse 19, then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff, stretch out, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and the canals, over the ponds and the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the vessels of wooden stones. So like... I just want people to picture this. Not only was the Nile River turned into blood, the lakes in Egypt were turned into blood. Mm -mm -mm. The ponds were turned into blood. The waters that you guys, the water that the, the water that the Egyptians had in their house, they took from these bodies of water also turned into blood. Mm -hmm. There was no drinkable water in Egypt. Everything turned to blood. Bro, if you had a water in your fridge, that was going to turn into blood. You understand? Like every air, all water, all drinking water would turn into blood. Turn into blood. So, like, listen to me. Sometimes you think, how much of a sign do, does people need, bro? <laughs> like, bro, imagine, imagine if the Nile turned into blood. You could. I was just reading something today, and they was thought I was, <laughs> I was reading because I was trying to read on the specifics on what God did. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like the Nile. There's something we hear about all the time and especially when you hear about Egypt, you always hear about the Nile. It's like a a very, um, it's like a landmark in Egypt. You understand? And that turned into blood. So this like, the specific, and I was trying to think about all the specifics that happened. And I see, I come across this article and it was like, oh, did, did, did it really happen, Right. And then the sign this was breaking down how this algae could have could have turned into that, which make blah 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 blah. So people 
people people coming up with their own type of try to hype they try to hypothesize yeah, right but, but check this out if you was there and you realize you going into your you going you going to take a shower and all the water that you gathered two days ago is turning to blood and ain't no one was in your house but you then you ain't have to question if this if this happened or not you understand you don't have to question what type Demi what type of sorcery that is that's not what I said. Like, Man, and then it's like another thing too. Is it was like a deeper meaning to when God, like the plagues that God started to, uh, I guess, was the word cast on Egypt, mm -hmm. because a lot of these plagues were specifically targeting Egyptian deities, and essentially, mm -hmm. like the like you kind of alluded to it, but like the Egypt the Egyptians and during that time, I think even to this day, to a certain extent, <clears throat> pardon my voice, but they kind of regarded the Nile as like a deity because mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much everything came from the Nile that yep. flowed from the Nile. So like they regarded and they regarded as a deity and God was saying, guess what? I have power over your deity already <laughs> from plague one. I'm, a, I'm establishing my supremacy over all of y'all gods because it's not even for you guys, it's for my people as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am the God who was, Greater over the Nile. So think about this, right? Today's bro, it's so funny because to in today's age, whenever people try to, um, <laughs> whenever they try to go back to their ancient heritage, I'm talking about black people. Somehow it always ends up in Egypt, as if all black people were from Egypt. I like mm -hmm. African spiritualism. Like they, bro, like I, bro, Boy. people abuse Egypt, Boy. bro. They <laughs> abuse ancient Egypt, and I'm just like, bro, relax, bro. There's no way every black person or every spiritual person came from Egypt. You understand what I said? And um, I just, hold on, give me a sec. So yeah, like it's just funny to me because you see all of these. Like a lot of black people, they they use these symbols and 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 this and that and the third. But hell, we see it's it's no it's no it's no it's it's no secret that Egypt was always a spiritual place. They did not worship the Most High God, but they were always very spiritual. So they worshiped this, they worshiped that. They had many gods. They had polytheism stuff like that. This is in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, even to this day, they had this god and that dog. But bro, it came a time when two people live in the same country, right? One worshiped the Most High God, one worshiped multiple gods. But the one who worshiped multiple gods, which were false gods, these are not real gods, they were the more, more prominent country. Mm -hmm. So literally, if you did not know any better, or if you didn't have a strong faith in the Most High God, you could easily say, our God is wrong. Their God are the more superior gods. And then from the Egyptian perspective, what is the Most High God that I should... What is the most high God that I should listen to you and care about that? And that's why Pharaoh had that demeanor. Like my gods have given me all of this. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So now is this is now God. This is now I am making a statement. I'm making a blatant statement. You guys probably prided yourselves in thinking that it's because of y'all false gods that y'all so prosperous. And as a result, you think that your gods is more superior to, to the most high God. So now God had to make a statement. I am going to do this for the Hebrews to see, for the Egyptians to see, for Pharaoh to see, for everybody from, from this point on to understand. And then that's and like like having this knowledge is crazy to me when people trace back they they um ancient um like spiritualism or like the religion of old mm -hmm. and they go back to pagan worship and they like, oh man, like you know, Christianity, we lost all of this. This was once ours, bro. If it was yours back then, it was wrong. Like, just that's straight up. You understand? This is perverted. This is like a perverted, like, religion. Like, you understand what I'm saying? It's not pure. It's like, it's, it does nothing to do with God. As a matter of fact, I can get, we can get to one of the plagues for sure. And, mm -hmm. and, and let's just, let's just get into the plagues. <laughs> let's just get into it. All right. So now to progress it, uh, we see in picking up from Exodus seven, verse 20, Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile and the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died. The river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood mm -hmm. was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same thing by their secret arts. Then hmm. Pharaoh's heart become hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not even and did, and did not take even this to his heart. And the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the river of the the water of the river. Hmm. Bro, so, but you see how the devil is leave you high and dry too, because here it is, right? 
it would it, it would behoove Pharaoh to oblige to what God is saying for many reasons. I might think, I mean, yeah, right? But I'm like, okay, Pharaoh, you're so smart, right? What sense, oh, what sense does it make me showing that I could turn water into blood too versus trying to turn the blood back into water? <laughs> that's In all true. reality, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, you turn my water back, you, you turn my water to blood, okay. To show that I'm superior, I'm going to turn it back into water because I don't need blood. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, that's strained and feral to think, oh, you guys ain't doing nothing. You ain't pushing no current, bro. You just turn, you just doing something that I could have do anyway. And, and here's the thing. I want to make a correction on what I said last week. I do not think that the devil caused those magicians to, to make a snake. But like you said, it was an illusion. Because literally, the devil cannot create life, mm-hmm. but he can create illusions. Now, the whole thing about him making carbon copies and confusing people based on that, that remains. But I, I think it was a little too much dip on the chips what I had last week. You guys giving the <laughs> devil a little too much credit. You understand? Like He can't make, he can't create. Mm-hmm. You know, like he can't create, but Adam and Eve could have had a child. You know what I mean? This is something that the devil cannot do. You know what I'm saying? And now watch this. Now, his illusions is deceiving Pharaoh. Pharaoh, won, Pharaoh is being confused by the devil, right? And even when the devil have to face off against God, he ain't helping Pharaoh at all. He keeping Pharaoh in the dark still. Because Pharaoh, seeing the magicians continue to do dark magic, which is magic, and, it cause, and it causing him to harden his heart. It's, there's a difference when you know, all right, I know who we up against and I know where we have to play this. But now Pharaoh just thinking, bro, your God just as good as my God. Mm-hmm. My God is through all these things, bro. My many gods to who we got, you know? And so now in 25, seven days had passed after the Lord struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so that they may worship me. It's always to worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs on your whole country. Mm. The Nile will tame with frogs. They will come up into your palace and and to your bedroom and onto your bed, onto the houses of your officials and to your people and onto your ovens of kneading and kneading your, and your kneading throughs. The frogs will come up onto you and your people and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff and over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come out of, on, Onto the land of Egypt. Okay, so check this out, right? It's something called Heket, right? H E K E T or H E Q E T. And that is the Egyptian goddess of fertility, identified with Hathor. And this is based on um, Wikipedia, um, represented in the form of a frog. Mm-hmm. So, and this is, fact check this H E K E T. This is an Egyptian goddess of fertility. Represented as a frog. So f- the first thing, well, this is the second. So we re identified the first deity is the Nile. The second is the frog. So here we have God showing you all. I am I am going to show you how worthless y'all gods and goddesses are. So this frog that you <laughs> that you regard so much. So highly. So highly, mm-hmm. I am going to infest the land with this frog. To the, and frogs are disgusting. Slimy You understand And this is my personal opinion And whatever However y'all feel Cool But my thing is Imagine Some how people really love frogs ima- yeah, But like imagine how gross that is bro Like you See it's one thing to hold something I want uh, out with regard Because we can see culturally That happens right mm-hmm. But now You get so much of it it's almost, it's almost like when the Hebrews wanted meat And God gave them so much quail You understand It became that, sickening to them And it, like to me I can't help but to Um Keep referencing the future of these people. You yeah. understand? But but yeah, so so we can see where where God is using the things that they hold sacred against them. You understand what I'm saying? Just to let you know, I am the God, I am the God that controls the weather and I control natural things. Your gods, you just take this natural thing and you worship it. We don't know why You understand But I am the God Who controls these things So y'all like frogs I'll give you frogs Man And so now we see In verse 6 Aaron stretched out his hand Over the waters of Egypt And the frogs came out And covered the land But 
the magicians did the same thing by their secret arts. Mm. They also made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Pharaoh then summoned Moses and Aaron and said, pray to the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices. Mm. Moses said to Pharaoh, I will leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people to go into your houses and to your houses to, and, maybe, and maybe rid of frogs, except for those that remain in the Nile. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. <laughs> oh, you think Pharaoh was capping? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole liar, bro. <laughs> Moses said, it will be as you say, so that you may know that there is none like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people, that they will re- and they will only remain in the Nile. But at what point Pharaoh got accept the fact that we, my people, powerful enough to recreate this, right? Why my people can't just... Take them away. Take them away. That's my thing. It's one thing to... You know, do the same thing I'm doing. But if what I'm doing is hurting you, why don't you use your power to stop what I'm doing? Exactly. Because my thing is, why you still need me to take away the plague? Because that means clearly you, you're you're admitting defeat, <laughs> but you can't admit that to yourself. Yeah, but he he's a wily one because he's saying, man, I could just tell him. Him and his wise men probably sit down and say, bro, just tell him that you can let them go if they retract the frogs. And then just turn around and don't retract the frogs. But you don't you don't consider that they could bring the frogs back, like, you know what I mean? Or something worse. This is already the second plague. After you already see him turn uh, his staff into a snake. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy, bro. It's just crazy, like, how this this guy is obviously blinded. Right now, it's like when you see in the New Testament, Jesus is literally performing miracles in mm-hmm. the sight of the Pharisees, bro. Like, this might be old Jimmy, who never spoke in his life. And it's a fact that he can't speak. You understand what I'm saying? Jimmy might be 60 years old. He might be older than Jesus. Way older than Jesus. So you know this couldn't have been a plot. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And Jesus come and, and, and make and tell him his sins are forgiven. And he can speak now. You witnessing this, but you hardening as Pharisees. Hardening your heart. Oh, this, this guy is a blasphemer. Like he can't be. Like you just go to show some people can really just be lost. In the presence of God, like we see God working through Moses, we see natural wonders and signs. That yes, God said he would do. Yes, Pharaoh act like how how we should act in the last days when the fake when the false prophet come around mm-hmm. and they doing signs and wonders, and if possible, the very elect would be deceived. Pharaoh said, "Nope, I'm not. I'm not going to be deceived." But it's it's, it's reversed though. Mm-hmm. You should. Yield, you understand? To you should God, accept yep. God, but you, you, you instead you want to push back, man. And so now, where was I? Um, after that, Moses and Moses and Aaron left. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died hmm. in the houses, in the courtyards, in the fields. Mm. They were piled into heaps, and the land reeked of them. Mm. Disgusting. That's nasty, bro. And that's the next thing is one thing I think is a powerful, like how God just said, you know what? I'm going to just, instead of just wishing them away, Mm -hmm. I'm going to just let them die. Yeah, y'all got to remember, because these are real frogs. These are real frogs. This is one thing to say like, oh yeah, like, this this isn't a visual illusion. Hmm. These frogs were here and, and think about it, you guys cherish these frogs so much that they can become become scornful to you guys. Because mm-hmm. now you gotta clean up all of these dead frogs. You gotta heap them and I just imagine that they, they, they starting to stink. Mm. Mercy. Mm-mm-mm. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, remember he's supposed to let the people go. Yep. But now you say, Oh, okay, the frogs are dead. They ain't coming in droves no more. He hardened his heart. Hmm. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Yep. And would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord said. So now we see in verse 16, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. Mm. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. Some versions say lice. They did just this. And when Aaron stretched out his hand this, with his staff and, it, and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came on the people and the animals and the dust, all the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. But when the magicians tried to produce the gnats by their secret arts, haha, hmm. they could not. That's when they realized. Since the gnats were on the people and the animals everywhere, the magician says to Pharaoh, this 
is the finger of God. Mm. So now let's look at this. They're the same magicians who were replicating everything, everything that they were doing so far. You know what I'm saying? Like they were doing the, the, the snakes, they did that. The water and the blood, they did that. The frogs, they brought fraud frogs again. Mm-hmm. Now they're saying nuts. Your own wise men and sorcerers who uphold the religion of the state telling you, this is the finger of God. We cannot replicate this. Whoever we give our allegiance to, we cannot replicate this. He does not have the power to do this, but the, whatever Moses and Aaron doing over there, hmm. that is from God. That's only, the real God deal. only God himself can do what they're doing. All right. And that's crazy because they got the wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? It's like Pharaoh just didn't want to accept it. Yeah, and they, it's they, there. They just they like they they're literally admitting there's a power greater than our own right now. Who who's who's this who this is attributed to? So now we get to the plague of flags. So now this is the fourth plague. It's the fourth plague. So then we see in verse 20, the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the river and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. Hmm. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies. Even the ground will be covered with them. But... On that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there. Mm-mm. And so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. See? And, bro, all right. You could be someone who just into frogs. Like, you understand? You like frogs. You love them. Whatever, right? You got it. Frogs leave. You got to deal with the stink. We got to deal with all of these piles of frogs. It's cool, all right? Next, the dust turn into knots or lice. Mm-hmm. Lice bite. You understand yeah, they, what they, they ain't, they ain't, uh, they ain't a fun. Yeah, they're not fun. Like, you see, you see lice getting people head and thing. They be freaking out. They about to go crazy. You understand? Like, same thing with animals. Animals of lice, they, they just, they just in pain. They miserable, right? Mm-hmm. But now we just have a bunch of flies coming around too. Now think about, Think about just regular, like when you leave fruit out for too long and it just flies around, how annoying that is, like these little fr- flies. Um, we have a type of fly called a doctor fly. I don't even know the real term for it. But in the out islands, when, like when I used to spend time with my aunts and like my families in, in like, this would be equivalent to the countryside. Those <laughs> flies are a menace, bro. They bite you, it hurts. Like it really hurts. It hurts a lot. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And like imagine... Imagine you have to deal with these flies. Flies, just flies in abundance is annoying, regardless if they bite you or not. Flies just being around, very annoying. Mm-hmm. Imagine you got to deal with that. You also have to deal with gnats. But if that's not interesting, you realize that the flies just stop before they get to the land of Goshen. Like, wait, y'all not dealing with that? Exactly. The people in Goshen looking at it like <laughs> looking with some binoculars, like, whoa, what's going on over there? Yeah, it's a little, look a they little dark over there. Yeah, like they going through a storm, right? Like it's a it's a fly storm or something. Like, what is this? You understand? And like at this point, it, it's undeniable. It should it should be undeniable. Number one, because the Egypt, um, the magicians had already said this was only God who could have done this. We couldn't. We can't do this type of thing. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Only God could do this. And then that's number one. So we already identified that. Number two, it's not happening to Goshen. So if God is doing something, why is God only targeting Egyptians? But in the same line, uh, there's a select amount of people who are not being targeted, which happen to be Hebrews. So like, you could, it, but it don't take a rocket scientist. It don't take wise men. It don't take magicians to put two and two together. You understand? And then at the same time, you have a priest and his brother telling you, to let his people go, let these people go so that they can worship. Like it's plain as day. But Pharaoh himself is hardening his heart. Hardening his heart. Like just imagine the other Egyptians being like, yo, why are we subjected to this? Hmm. Just I, let them go. But they need to revolt against Pharaoh. Just let them go. This could, this could end a long time. If they just say, oh, all right, man, we just go. go. We could do to you what you was afraid the Egyptians, was get, the, the Hebrews could do. You understand? Just for the sake of our sanity. Because mm-hmm. it's not getting better. No. <laughs> Now in verse 8, verse 24, the Lord, 
and the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured onto Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. Mm. Throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by flies. Mm. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron saying, go sacrifice to your God here in the land. <laughs> so Pharaoh is saying, okay, you want to leave and go sacrifice and go okay, worship? Three days. Pharaoh said, you know what? Don't, don't do that. Just stay here. Yeah. Moses said, hold on. That would not be right. The sacrifices we offer to our God will be detestable to the Egyptians. Mm. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable to Egyptians in their eyes, will they not stone us? Mm. We must take this three-day journey into mm. the wilderness and offer our sacrifices to the Lord as he commanded us. So now we see Pharaoh jump slip and Moses say, no, 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 no. Mm. We have to do our sacrifices and we have specific instructions on what to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You Egyptians... These animals are regarded as holy and sacred in this land. They got so much. They got everything holy. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? So now, if we were to do this in this land, your own people would look down upon us and they would want to, they would want to kill us because we are sacrificing their holy animals. Mm -hmm. That is not going to work. We need to leave and go in the wilderness and do as we are we're already commanded by God to do. Pharaoh said, okay, hmm. I will let you go over, go to offer your sacrifices to the Lord in the wilderness but you must not go very far. Hmm. Now pray for me. <laughs> but Pharaoh is doing normal rule. Pharaoh, see, you can see he conflicted because like, think about it, right? You want this to end. But you want to have your cake and eat it too, essentially. It's actually right? what Pharaoh is doing. Right. But at the same time, you want to be out of pain. You want your misery to end right now. I can't wait three days. To stop getting bite by flies, bro. It could take you three days, then you probably could take your time worshiping. I need this right now. Go and do it. And then three days back. And then three days back. And then three days back, bro. Like, you understand what I'm saying? So just do it right now. But Moses, like, come on, Pharaoh. You know better than that, bro. You know that's the, how is that a thing? Like, how why are you even saying that? And after that, he says, Pray for me. You understand what I said? Like. I know that made me feel it sad for Pharaoh that he in, in such a conundrum where he. Uh, I don't feel sad for Pharaoh. Right, like it weird, bro. Like, I mean, I want Pharaoh to be saved, bro, but he just don't want. He just don't want to follow God, bro. Like, you understand what I say? Like, yeah, it's like Cain. Yeah. God already tell you what to do. See, and like, and then the same time, you can't really be sad for people who's who's be brazen towards God, like God. I mean, Cause like there right now, it's like a blatant choice. Like we ain't even going through, we ain't even went through all the plagues right now, but this is already like plague number four. There's a blatant choice at this point. Hmm. You are blatantly choosing to not follow God. Yeah, bro. And then you see God tell you to stay firstborn son, but I, I don't care. Like, like I care about my stuff more than your firstborn stuff, but these bricks got to make. Understand? You think these pyramids can make themselves? I saw he giving it up, you know? <laughs> Uh, so in verse 29, Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only let Pharaoh be sure that he does not act deceitfully again by not letting the people go offer their sacrifices to the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord and the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people and not a fly remained. But this time, also Pharaoh hardened his heart. And you say, bro, I'm not letting these people go. Hmm. Okay. And the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord God of the Hebrews says. Let my people go so they may worship. Every time, bro, like why people don't like, why did not say the full saying? Hmm. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will be bring a terrible plague onto your livestock in the field, onto your horses, onto your donkeys and your camels, on, and onto your cattle, and to your sheep, and to your goats. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The so, let me say something though, bro. It's something called H-E-S-A-T, he sat. Is an Egyptian. My boy bring up all Egyptian gods. Oh. <laughs> I just doing it on the fly right go now. Go for it, bro. go for it, go for it. It's an ancient Egyptian goddess in the form of a cow. Yeah, the ox thing. Yes. She was said to provide humanity with milk and in particular to suckle the pharaoh and several ancient Egyptian bull gods. Don't don't know what that means per se, but it, all I'm saying is this is another um, deity. It's an Egyptian goddess. It's just a cattle. You understand what I'm saying? So, and I'm like, like, 
this isn't a reach. Like, like, like we just told you like three, three guards. And I wasn't even, I ain't even do the, the research research. You understand? Like I doing these on the fly right now. And like to me, after the frogs, I was like, all right, that's probably it. But then when I like a cattle, I see a cattle, and I'm sure we're gonna bro, it's just gonna continue. And, and God is God is making a statement. This is this isn't a random thing. And it's it's, a, it's important to understand the times, bro. Every, all of the Egyptians, right then and there, they they understood this loud and clear. And it just goes to show you how much hardening Pharaoh had to do. You messing with their gods, bro. You messing with my gods. Like mm-hmm. that should be touchy enough for you. You know, and then the the the, the uh, magicians already say, bro, this this is only God can do this, bro. Like only you can the see, they, they they stop trying. Now. Yeah, they stop trying, bro. I ain't even I'm not in that no more. <laughs> you know, but Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh caves, and then Pharaoh reneges. You know, we <laughs> we continue in the see this. You know, the Lord set a time and said, tomorrow the Lord will do this to the line. And the next day, the Lord did it. Hmm. All the Egyptians' livestock died. But none of the Israelites' livestock died. Pharaoh investigated and found out that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died. Yet his heart was young, yielding, and he would not let the people go. Now let's think, let's just like break this down a bit. He even went so far to do his, do his own research, saying, guess what? In the land of Goshen, not, one, not even one animal died of natural causes that day. Mm-hmm. God was like, nah, you ain't even going to have no ammo against me. All of y'all animals died. Every last one. And not a single one in the land of Goshen died. Mm-mm-mm. Not one. Man, he was like, oh, okay, well, shoot. We confirmed that. Okay, it is what it is. Y'all still ain't going nowhere. Y'all thought, y'all thought this was going to be y'all escape? Not happening. <laughs> hey, let me say something else, Chad. I just see something called Capri, K-H-E-P-R-I, who had the head of a fly. So even to the, to the fly point, bro, like, bro, 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 what is going on, dog? Mm-hmm. Like, bro, there's something for, bro, there's something for every plague. They have a God for every plague. You understand what I'm saying? Man, that's crazy. But think about that, though. Think about that. No livestock. What are the odds, bro? What are the odds? We're all, only the Egyptian. This at, at this point, this is overwhelming amounts of evidence that this is specifically targeted to the Egyptians. And we know why, like, but the guy Pharaoh just keeps hardening his heart, you know, because in his mind, like this is a competition at this point now. Like I ain't losing the yard. You know, I already, I already in too deep. I, I, I ain't barking down straight up. You know, I'm just not barking down. So, <laughs> And now, so this is where things really start to get interesting for me too, with the plagues. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take handfuls of soot or ash from the furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of the Pharaoh. So now, even like one of the point in the last couple of plagues too, we see Moses was, I would say, getting his confidence back. You see, Moses was going like, yeah, I'm talking now. I'm going to Pharaoh, I'm talking. And now we see, now Moses is the one performing the acts. Moses toss it into the air. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and festering boils will break out, to the, break out onto the people and the animals of the land. Wow. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, tossed it into the air and festering boils broke out. And the reason why I say, this was interesting, we see up to this point, God was giving Pharaoh time. Mm-hmm. People were saying, tomorrow I'll do it. You have a whole 24 hours to make up your mind if you want to let these people go or not. Tomorrow I'll do it. Tomorrow I'll turn the water into blood. Tomorrow I'll uh, send the flies. Tomorrow I'll send the gnats. Tomorrow I'll let the livestock die. You have you have time to re, to renege. Mm-mm. Now I don't need it. He's saying, okay. All right, you, you ready show me what you ready? Keep on showing me your heart and your heart. Mm-hmm. Moses, go and do this, and immediately this will happen. Mm-hmm. Ain't no time to think about this no more. You ready show me what you would what, like what's on your heart? Here we go. So we see they took the soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air and festering boils broke out on the people and the animals. Mm -hmm. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils that were on them and all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron Mm -hmm. just as the Lord had said to Moses. Mm -mm -mm. So now we see the plague of hail. This one was interesting too. The Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning, 
confront Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord God of the Hebrews says, let my people go so that they may worship me every time without fail. So this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the face of the earth. Mm. You see God getting in his bag yeah, now. Yeah, God's yeah. like, nah, you see? <laughs> yeah, nah, 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 nah. Hold on now. <laughs> I didn't want to have to do this now, but y'all making me do this. <laughs> And then, you know, I, I really could have, I, I really could have done white pull off the face there, but I have raised you up for this very purpose that you, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You mm. still set yourself against my people. I will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt mm. from the day it was founded until now. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to place to a place of shelter because the hail will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and still out in the field and they will die. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So I missed the last one, right? But there's something called <laughs> Sakemet, right? That's the goddess with the power to stop epidemics, mm -hmm. right? I also see where... They say this is another goddess, Isis, who have healing powers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. One, that one, that one, that's one of the popular Egyptian gods. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one of the main ones. That's the big dogs, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, but now this one is, this one is in relation to, like, they have a sky goddess, Osiris. Another that's popular another one. That's another popular one. The, so now you think the sky goddess was mad at the Egyptians, bringing <laughs> healing? Because think about where Egypt is, bro. How often do you think they can see hail? You mm -hmm. understand? Like, I never see hail in the Bahamas. Not even close to it. Just because of because of the climate. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now they have big hail storms. I think of Egypt as a hard place. And uh, my, 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 my education is limited on this. You understand? <laughs> Every time I see Egypt in a picture or anything like that, it never seems like it's winter or snowing or anything. Now, basically. You understand what I'm saying? So now we have hail falling from the sky. But now they sky... Bro, this God, this sky God who y'all worship or whatever... She mad at y'all, apparently, if that's how y'all want to look at it. You know what I mean? Because, nah, she, she doing something that ain't, that ain't coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't even... Yeah, that's all, I can, that's all I can say on it. So, like, we can see where God has made his point. And God at the point where, like, all right, I don't want to have to make a serious point against y'all, bro. Because I, I could just take my people away from y'all, you know. But I trying to help y'all to remain alive after all of this. You know what I mean? Because, like, think about it, bro. We have Egyptians who see in this who who ain't agree with Pharaoh. Not every not every Egyptian would have agreed with Pharaoh, especially at this at the point of you experiencing harm. You know? So what happens to the people who would like to convert? You don't understand? Like, are all of those are everyone doomed for the sake of one man? You know? And we can see where even, even in God punishing the Pharaoh and the Egyptians right now, we can still see mercy at the same time because God could have killed them a long time. I could have yep. killed y'all before this even happened. Like, we didn't even need Moses to come here and talk to y'all. I could have just killed y'all. You know, but at the same time, Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh's heart wouldn't have been revealed. And then we wouldn't have seen God's power revealed. You know? And in all that, we wouldn't have seen God's grace and mercy in the midst of him punishing Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And so now we see the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven. That there may be a that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man, on beast, and on every herb of the field or herb of the field depends on you know some people get touchy with that word. Throughout the land of Egypt, and Moses stretched out his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder, hail, and and fire darted to the ground, mm -hmm. and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. Oh. The very heavy, so very heavy that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt, all that there was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail struck every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field, only in the land of Goshen where there was the children of Israel. There was no hail. So let's think about this, right? You spent at minimum 40 years using slave labor to enhance your country. And now in a matter of days, 
your entire country has been destroyed. Now, we don't know about the buildings and stuff, but I'm sure the buildings were affected with all of this because livestock has died, trees, you know, all of this stuff is, bro, it's fire. And it's hail. You understand what the and, hail know? And it's so interesting too, because like you see how it only could be God, because you would think the fire would melt the ice. How? Like exactly. Like how is that? Or how are they coexisting? Oh, two of them coexisting together <laughs> because they are obeying their creator. Yeah. <laughs> like. So, but my thing is, your goal was to enhance Egypt. Oh, oh, and to not be at war against, you know, like to stop mm-hmm. them from revolting, right? But by doing that, you chose to enhance Egypt in the process. But here it is. Now you're doing nothing but destroying your country. Mm. The water turning bloody and nasty. You understand what I say? We ain't got to go through all that, but frogs and all type of Stinking lice. Stinking up the place, lice. Right, all type of nasty stuff going on. What type of country this is, bro? We got, Mercy. We got ice and fire falling from the sky. Listen to me. Thunder, lightning, ice. Any one of these plagues would have been enough for the cars. <laughs> you understand? Anyone. From the first one, the water turned into blood. Nah. I don't mean, know. That's that's no. That's that little gross. Y'all can to go. Me. Y'all can go. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I ain't into that. Yeah, y'all go. But trust me, the frogs, done deal. Done deal. But I might have. But I might have died, bro. And the dead frogs are that too. Now you gotta clean it up. Oh, that's disgusting. Because they all bro. in your house. That's that's this. But I might have had a heart attack, bro. <laughs> but from three of them run up on me, bro. <laughs> you see a cardiac arrest, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fair was different, bro. Yeah, he Fair Fair was really stubborn, but, really, really stubborn. Yep. And now we see then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he said to them. <laughs> this the time Lord, I sinned. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, for we have had enough thunder and hail. Mm. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. Then Moses replied, "When I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands and in prayer to the Lord." The thunder will stop and there will be no more hail. So mm. you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear God. Mm. So we see the, the flocks and the barley were destroyed since the barley and headed of, and the flax was in bloom. The wheat and spelt, however, were not destroyed because they ripen later. I guess some just context of what all was destroyed during the hailstorm. Um, and then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. He spread out his hands toward the Lord. The thunder and the hail stopped and the rain no longer poured down onto the land. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again. He and his bristles hardened their hearts. So Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not let the Israelites go just as the Lord God said to Moses. See, and at this point in time, they, they just intentionally being stubborn. Like him and his officials, they, they gathering with each other and they like, we ain't, nope, nope, nope. Oh, no, it stopped. It stopped. Yeah, bro. And my thing is, again, 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 just how, just how humans can be so deceived and so lost in their own ideologies. Why? Y'all don't, if y'all have all this power, stop these plagues. Yeah. Because clearly y'all still need Moses. Because each time y'all think y'all have enough, we have to call, we have to call Moses in. Just think about it. Why they ain't kill Moses long time? They know Moses is their savior. Exactly. They know these plagues ain't going to stop it. Right. If I kill Moses now, these plagues never going to stop. You understand? Okay. So now in uh, chapter 10 of Exodus, we see again, the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of the officials so that they may perform, so that I may perform the signs of mine among them that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with with the (laughs) Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them and that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrew says, how long will you refuse to to humble yourself before me? Mm. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. They will cover the, the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have left after the hail, mm. including every tree that is growing in the fields. They will fill your houses and, you, and those of all your officials in, and all the Egyptians. Something neither your parents nor your ancestors have seen from this day, from the day they settled in this land till now. Then Moses turned to Pharaoh and left. There was no discussion. God said, go there, say this. 
and leave. Because I was just saying, like, it can come a time and it could be like, but I ain't negotiating with you no more, but I'm telling you not. You understand what I'm saying? I see something where it says, um, the eighth plague of grasshoppers was significant because the Egyptians worshipped grasshoppers and associated them with the gods of peace and the afterlife. Mm-hmm. And even go into your, <laughs> go into your um, um, keeping up with your thing, right? So now we see God, God has been greater than Kanum, that was the god near the Nile. Mm-hmm. God has been greater than Hapi, that's like the spirit of the Nile or whatever. Then he's been greater than Hikret, the frog goddess, greater than the uh, goddess Hathor, the cow-like mother goddess, mm-hmm. greater than the god Imhotep, Isis, Orias, uh, greater than Nut, the sky goddess. Mm. So we see God really establishing his, his dominion over Egypt. Yeah, bro, and it's like, it's plain, it's plain as day. Like, it ain't, so here's the thing, bro. <laughs> all, and, and it's like, all right, so we see, we see God, for lack of a better term, taking shots directly at their, mm-hmm. at their gods, right? But at the same time, it ain't just offending their gods, it's impacting them in real life. Like, you haven't boils on your skin. You understand what I'm saying? You haven't, um, um, people dying, livestock's dying, you haven't, Knots, you know, you have in stinky frogs, livestock, um, um, crops, right? Crops gone. And God was like, if you don't let the people go, we're going to send locusts to eat the remaining of the crops, whatever left. Whatever, whatever you have left. Right. So this like finish him type of situation. And then we're so funny now we see in verse seven, Pharaoh's official said to him, how much longer will this man be a snare to us? Mm. Let the people go so they may worship their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? <laughs> they accepted it now. So I think this is the same officials who was for, performing some of the acts for him. <laughs> and he's just still his top bra saying, bruh, okay, oh. I understand that you were locked in your ways and you want to keep the people here. Mm. But to what end? See, because think about it, bro. The plague before, the, the officials heart in the heart. You understand? Then the locusts coming and they're like, bro, you can't see? Can't you see? Think about the locusts ain't even come yet. <laughs> they about to come. <laughs> and they was like, bro, Pharaoh, we only have a little bit of stuff there because now nah, that's even important. Why well, I think the last chap the last the last chapter was pointed out, okay, they saw like what uh the barley or whatever left. Mm-hmm. And now we've seen the officials saying, bro, we ain't got nothing left. Egypt done ruined the hail and ripe out almost everything. Mm-hmm. Now you still letting them, you still hold on to this. Then we see Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go worship the Lord your God. He said, but tell me who going. Moses answered, we will go to our young, our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, because Mm. we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Mm. Pharaoh said, the Lord be with you. Mm. If I let you go along with your women and children, clearly you are bent on evil. No, have only the <laughs> man go and worship the Lord. <laughs> since, that, since that's what you've been asking for. <laughs> then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Pharaoh's a mean bro. one. Pharaoh's a mean one. Pharaoh's the Grinch, bro. <laughs> Pharaoh's a mean one, bro. <laughs> There's always something with Pharaoh. He's like, okay, yeah, but who's going? <laughs> Women and children? Oh, oh no. no. Can't happen. No, no, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Can't happen. Bro, what is going on? <laughs> Bro, that's crazy, dog. That is... T- I can't believe Pharaoh at this point. Pharaoh, come on. Come on, Pharaoh. And we see, okay... God was like, mm, okay, Moses, stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand over, the, over Egypt so that, locusts sw- so that the locusts swarm over the land and devour everything in the fields, everything left by the hail. Hmm. Wow. So Moses, listening to God, stretched out his staff over Egypt. And the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. Hmm. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all of Egypt and they settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor there, nor there ever be again. Whoa. They covered the ground until it was black. They covered all that was left after the hill, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained in the plant or tree in all the land of Egypt. 
You remember, you remember last year? I was just thinking about that, like how Africa had the plant, like the, the, the plague of locusts, essentially. Right. And they were just eating everything. Yeah. This, worse than that. Bro, but you remember how disgusting that looked? Yeah. To watch them destroy a tree? Mm-hmm. And it was all over? Yes. Bro, that's, bro, that's nasty. <laughs> but think about that, right? <laughs> and then, so that's, that was a place in Africa, right? And then, as, it's, as, it's, as, it, as it is written, there has never been a plague as bad a plague of locusts as bad as that specific one and there will never be so that one where we see we, we was so gross but that ain't nothing compared to this you understand so like Pharaoh bro I don't know what would it take Pharaoh what would it take for you to just oblige because here it is you were you were forcing them to enhance your your, your country by building stuff and doing all of this. And for years, you it's been working. And now all you just work for is gone away. You understand what I'm saying? So like, fair, bro, you taking a big L, bro. Like literally, you could have had all the stuff, bro. You could have had everything. You could have had all the labor they had done for you up until Moses came to bring them back. And then you just let them go and everyone would have won. You understand? Let them go. Let them go. But now you ended up with nothing. Everything that you thought you had is now being taken away from you slowly and methodically because you decided that you're not going to yield to the will of God. No, that's just crazy, bro. So now we see picking up in verse 16. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. I have sinned against the Lord and against you. The second time he admitted he has sinned. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Mm. Then Moses, Moses then left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the wind to the, to the very strong west wind, <laughs> which caught up the locusts and carried them into the Red Sea. Not a locust was left in Egypt anymore, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would mm. not let the Israelites go. So we mm-hmm. see the, the locusts came from the east and God said, okay, I'm just blow them from the west back to the east. Mm-mm-mm. So now in verse 21, the, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky so the darkness spreads out over all of Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. That's interesting. See, every time I get there, that does always be so... Ominous. That, yeah, bro. You could feel this darkness. But you know you know who... I don't even have to Google this one. You know who this is? You know which God this is? Ra. Ra. <laughs> the sun god, bro. Ra. The sun god, the infamous. Even, but even that too, like they worship, I mean, Egyptians, they worship, the, they worship the sun and the moon. So this is, but Ra is the most definitely this one, this one against Ra. Oh, that's true. But they worship both the moon, the sun and the moon. Yeah, because think about it, night doesn't mean darkness, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you still got the moon there shining? Yeah. Because like you ever been around, like you see when power out, how bright outside this beat? Because, yeah. you know, lights to distract from the sun and the stars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just on the beach at night the other day, bro, and it was it was, it was was pretty lit because of... It was well of, lit because of the moon. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> understand? Like, it's, like, interesting. But this, you get that. You don't got no lights. The electricity probably wasn't round at all in any type of fashion. And no moon, no stars, no nothing. Just darkness. That is... That is crazy. It's like everyone is blind, like... Type of situation, man, and it's. I guess it's gonna be me getting fake deep right now, but like, darkness is the, op- is, is is the absence of light. The absence of light. Yeah. Light is not really a physical property in the biblical sense. It's literally an attribute of God. Mm-hmm. Literally, God removing His presence from Egypt, like all the blessings and everything you guys had. I'm taking my physical presence away from you guys now, like. Mm. Yeah, bro, that because uh, you can. You, there has to be like almost like a spiritual aspect to this, because like the darkness can be felt. Bro, yes, bro. You can physically feel that like God's presence is in here no more. Like something's different with this darkness. You know what this feel like? To me, this feel like when your parent right discipline you, and you can take the quick discipline, or right, taking away your game, boy. All right, cool. Because I know what I do, but it's a difference when your parent turn around and say disappointed in you. Like, that's like a hurtful thing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, to me, this this the point would it feel like right now. Where God just basically say disappointed in you. And like, like this ain't much of a punishment, you know? Like, to me, bro, if I could do a day, which, like, I would, I'd probably rather a day of darkness over a day of boils. 
You understand? Or a day of knots or hail or thing like that. You understand what I'm saying? But this one of them things, like it, it just hurt. Like it just hurt to see that. Like, mm-hmm. like God martyred us. Like, you know, and you could feel, you could feel the lack of energy around. Like it just feel dark. Mm-hmm. See, the darkness can be felt, but you think about feeling dark, bro. Like you ever felt dark? Like that, bro. Imagine you living in darkness and then you feel in the darkness too, bro. Like that's like a solemn, like a, like a, I know that's like a, was, I don't I don't even know how to describe that. Like And they was like this for three days. <sighs> Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky and the total darkness covered all of Egypt for three days. Mm-hmm. No one could see anyone else or move about. Like it's so dark. Three days. Hmm. You can't even see anybody else. Like, what do you just do? Do you just lay in bed all day? Hmm. Just sit down on the couch all day? Like, what do you do for three days? Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they live. Bro. And you can see it has to be an act of God because now, naturally, you would think if it's dark, what I'm going to do? I'm going to light a candle. Mm-hmm. But think of, happening. How you going to find the candles, bro? Because think about how easy it would be. Granted, it was an abomination for Israelites to be mixing and mingling with the, I mean, for the Egyptians to be around Israelites, right? Why you couldn't just go to Goshen? <laughs> but how you going to find Goshen, bro? Mm-hmm. But it's one thing, but that's like someone make you blind right now and tell you go to I-4, bro, from right, go to the highway right now, from right where you sitting right now. You got to exit. You got to walk perfectly. You got to do all of this. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And you can take a, you can take a turn prematurely and you think you on that road, but you could be, you know what I mean? You could be going up the wrong street type of situation, you know? Like how they was can even get there, like without Mm -hmm. seeing it's like it ain't, but it ain't, even, but it ain't even the darkness. Like you just can't see. Period. Like you just blind. You know what I mean? And at the same time, in the fig, in the in the metaphoric sense, they was blind already. Type of situation. Like you got God, you got the Most High God right in front of y'all, and you getting upset with Him. Like they upset. Like they ain't, these they ain't repentant. Like they mod. Like imagine if this story was told from the Egyptian perspective. You understand? Like yeah. God was so cruel to us. Yeah, this cruel God type of thing. They might be coming and like, you know, it's lack of accountability a lot of times, you know, so. And so now we see Pharaoh tried to come with a bargain again. He summoned Moses and said, go worship your Lord. Hmm. Even your woman and children could go with you. Since this set it off the last time, your woman and children could go with you. But now guess what? I just need you to leave your flocks and herd behind. Moses said, you must allow us to go have our sacrifices and the burnt offerings to present to our Lord, our God. Our livestock must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. My man say, I ain't even leaving a, a piece of the leg behind. Every th- we are going. Mm-hmm. Women, children, men, livestock, we all going. We must use some of them in worshiping the Lord, our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are going to use to worship our Lord. So he say, no, there's no, there's no compromise here, Pharaoh. Hmm. There's no compromise. We ain't halfway doing this. You ain't about to say you was able to bargain with God. This is going to happen like eight, eight, nine times at this point, bro. We ain't doing that no more. Nope. Hmm. We see the, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses... Get out of my sight. Mm. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face will be the day you die. <laughs> Just as you say, Moses replied, I'll never appear before you again. Simple. Mm. Like, but yeah, but that's, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Because, and it's easy to speculate when you ain't in this. Mm-hmm. You understand? And, I, and I, I, I am fortunate and I am thankful that I am not in a place where that I know of in all honesty that my heart is like sincerely hardened and like all the signs coming. You understand what I'm saying? But, but think about this though. You could, you, I've, I've had friends and family mm-hmm. to be in toxic relationships. It could be a friendship. It could be a romantic relationship. It could be like a family type. You understand? And everything, every sign in the world saying, bro, get out of this. This isn't helping you. You're, you're losing your health. You understand? Your sanity, you losing all opportunities. But some people just don't do it. When I was in, I was in Sabbath school, it was like a decade ago. And I was saying like how 
for lack of a better word, how idiotic was it of Samson to continue to see himself fall in this trap over and over, but you still laying up with this girl every day. So you tell this girl one thing, you wake up that mm-hmm. night, and that one thing that you just told us specifically is happening to you. Mm-hmm. What are the odds? You know what I mean? And the, um, the Sabbath school teacher was like, you see, Samson fell for this like three times or so. But I guarantee you, there are sins that the devil has put in place for you that you have failed more than 10 times. Mercy. And he said, he's he talking about me. He ain't saying you as in, in general. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, he drugged me. Yeah, he got me. I, I couldn't run on with that. And, and I'm glad he said that because it helps me to understand. You know, because like as a human being, bro, it's easy to speculate. I could sit there and say, bro, Pharaoh, how you all not getting it? How you so stubborn? You understand? But we've seen other human beings in the Bible who are just as stubborn. We've seen people who walk with Jesus, who miss it. Judas? Mm. Judas walked with Jesus, didn't get it. You understand? Even more than Judas. Even he's the most famous one. But like a lot of them still, even to like almost right up to the end, didn't really uh, fully comprehend Fox. who Jesus was. Fox, some of them is doubting even Peter. We see how Peter give it up. Peter deny Jesus. You don't understand, but Thomas. Right. Thomas was just a doubt. Like, like I it's funny. It's funny to read, but it was like every time I see him, it's be funny. But I just think about Pharaoh, man. And it's somehow lost we could be without God, bro. It just mm-hmm. show how lost you could be. If you ain't allowing God to lead you, you could definitely be lost and you could stand up for something you have no business standing up for. This guy, he was standing up and fighting for slavery. <laughs> You, you see how sick that sound, bro? Like, it ain't like he fighting for equality. It's like, you have like Martin Luther King and, and, and these type of people, like, they do sit-ins, they get hoes, they get tear gas, all type of thing, and they stand and they fighting for equality and like, ain't nothing can make a shake. Pharaoh is caught on the wrong side of history with this. Mm-hmm. You understand? And in the book of names, we don't even have his name. This is this, this probably the most pivotal story or maybe the most notable story in the book of names. But... And despite that, one of the main characters, because right now it's Moses, Aaron, God, it's God, Moses, Aaron, and Pharaoh, but he's the only one who don't even have a name. You understand? Because at the end of the day, we ain't glorifying villains. Because this guy was, like I say, was caught on the wrong side of history. And like, it just go to show that, bro, without God, like we could be blind. And that's why you have to, that's why you have to treat a lot of people with love. Somebody could hit you with a doctrine or some type of religion that you, to you, this might just seem nonsensical. But at the end of the day, if it ain't about God, if it ain't about Jesus Christ, like the true Messiah, everything else is just nonsensical at the end of the day. You understand? So you can't say, oh, this one is more logical than any. Because if ain't none of them bringing you closer to Christ, all of them bringing you away from Christ. Bang. So we can see where these Egyptian cultures and their gods has brought Pharaoh and a lot of their officials to the place where they can't even respect God. In the in the in the sight of human hurt, you know, in the sight of loss of possessions, it didn't get to death yet. But some people are, bro. I'm sure people have died, like livestock has died from you know this hail and fire. Oh, yeah, we talking like, about like they were saying, anyone who got caught in the fields will die in the hailstorm. Exactly. So we have death. We have death, and people still ain't. And then think about all the other diseases that are just a result of some of these other plagues too, like the dead frogs, the bro. infections, the flies. Like flies aren't really around anything that's alive. Bro. Exactly. Like, so all type of bacteria and all type of stuff that could be happening. You understand? But at the same time, these guys they sticking and they standing firm for the wrong thing, and that's mm-hmm. and that's 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 how the devil. That's that's what the devil wants us to do. Like the the devil wants us to be loud and wrong. The devil wants us to be unteachable, loud and proud. You understand? So like, so like, like even reading these type of chapters, like it's helped me to try to instill in my mind not to try to be a know it all. Dream. You understand? Like just be teachable. You might you might but you might think you're doing the right thing, bro. But at the end of the day. It's a possibility that you ain't right or you ain't right all the time. You see what I'm saying? So like, bro, especially especially while on this journey, and especially being a servant of God, humility. Humility is key. Being able to accept stuff, being able to learn and to unlearn and not hardening your heart against God. Against God. Against God. The fate of Egypt is at stake. Here we see that time after time, destruction after destruction, Plague after plague, Pharaoh still remains unwavered. They've lost their health, 
their livestock, their material possessions, and even in some cases their lives. And right when they thought they had lost everything, there was still one more plague to be sent. But we'll talk more about Pharaoh, the fate of the Israelites, and the 10th plague on the next episode of A Breath of of Fresh Air. 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 Tonight's episode included voice acting by your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nikaz Gay. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at A Breath of Fresh Air Pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week.